And you will recall he was fined last week for failing to do his media obligations, mm -hmm. which are, as I mentioned, in the CBA contract with players signed when he said, I do not talk to pawns. Apparently mm. that has changed. Listen to Kyrie today. Well, uh, like I said, the focus is on what's going on in the task here, you know, my job. And I wanted to make sure that that was clear. There are no distractions, nothing about dispelling anything, nothing about going back and forth, knowing about calling out one person or another, not even to refer to you guys as pawns, you know what I mean, or media. It's just really how I felt about the mistreatment of certain artists when we get to a certain platform of when we make decisions within our lives to have full control and ownership. You know, we, we, we go through the rigorous season, we, we do everything we're asked to do, you know, and, and we want to perform in a secure and protected space. And if I can't have my voice protected on this platform where I offer myself and my art, just inviting everyone to it because this is what I've been blessed to do. And then you got a, you got a two-time MVP coaching you, man. I'm like, you know, I think I got to take back more comments in terms of head coach back a few months ago, but it's just like, man, we have such a great synergy. It, everyone feels like we're coaching one another to be better. So I'm grateful for that. Coach Fizz, what's your reaction when you see him there? Well, that's the right thing to say, obviously, uh, to clarify. But at the end of the day, the media is just part of the deal. And especially in New York City, get used to it. I've <laughs> lived it. Um, and for the most part, in New York, you have really uh, big-time sports journalists. But you do have those writers who are sensationalists and want to poke at you and, and kind of tabloid it. And so I see how that can get annoying to a player at times. But you just kind of kind of prepare yourself that that's what it's going to be. They're going to always be trying to pull at your threads, always trying to pull at your culture, especially in a big media market like that. And you're just going to have to find a common ground and a good level of respect to walk that line with them. <laughs> Dave? Well, speaking as someone who covered him day in, day out for three years and didn't really feel like I had a different advanced relationship with him at the end of those three years than I did on day one, I, all I ask is, as someone as a speaking on behalf of the media core, an advocate for the job we do, is just fulfill your obligations. Don't have to be friends with us, but speak to us after games because yeah. if ultimately what you seek is understanding for the art that you are putting out there, the best way we can understand it is if we hear it directly from you. Because otherwise, we got to talk to other people who can interpret what you're doing and then put those quotes and that information in our stories versus getting it straight from the source. And so today, I hope was an olive branch because listen, the Nets are gonna be one of the most fascinating teams all season long. Yes. Kyrie's one of the most fascinating characters in that group. So let's hear it directly from the horse's mouth. It's interesting to me watching him speak just now, the best advocate for Kyrie Irving is Kyrie Irving. Absolutely. He is telegenic, he is charming, he is smart. When he wants to have a real conversation, he he's a, he is winning in every kind of way. And he could be his own advocate in, in so many ways with the people that he feels are, are causing him distractions or taking away right. from him. He could actually be helpful in changing that. It's when he does the big Instagram sort of, you <laughs> know, broadcast. treatises yeah. that I think allows people to sort of read into it to Dave's point. I was also interested to hear him make his comment about Steve Nash saying, oh, I got to take back what I said a few months ago. That was, of course, in reference to the podcast that he and Kevin Durant did together where he said, oh, one day he's going to be the coach. One day I'm going to be the coach. We're all going to be coaches. <laughs> a and it's funny in the moment. Again, some people said, eh, that that's not a great thing to set up your new coach Steve Nash legendary right. Steve Nash with and he was upset that people were quote taking it out of context or why do I live in this media world and all of that well today he said himself I got to take back what I said right so clearly he knows now that was not the right thing to say yeah and I just think that he's going to learn fast they're going to have to put a nice little bubble over their team same thing we did in Miami you know, don't say too much. You just give them enough. You don't let them in your locker room from the standpoint of information. Because mm -hmm. the biggest issue they're going to have this year are people trying to tear them apart from the outside. Mm -hmm. That team's got great. You can see the relationships are there. Steve Nash is the kind of guy that's a team builder. So they do have to be aware of what can tear them apart outside. But you need to understand you have to deal with the media. And you can use the media to your advantage if you, you know, approach it with the proper level of respect. The media is a conduit to the fans. No I mean, doubt. That's just 
That's just how it is. That's yes. why that is part of the collective bargaining agreement. <laughs> Kevin Durant returning to action last night. Man, let's get back Ooh. to the court because this was so great. I First time since tearing his Achilles in game five of the 2019 finals. 15 points, three rebounds, three assists, two blocks, 24 minutes of action. But most of all, right. Coach, he just looked like himself. Having fun. It looks great with having one of our superstars back on the yeah. court. It makes the league exciting and interesting. And the things I looked for were, how many times did he shoot inside the restricted area? Two for three inside the paint. He was five for six from the free throw line, which means he is attacking, that he's putting pressure on that leg to do the things that it's always done for him. And over the time that he plays this year, as his minutes grow, he'll get stronger. And I think playing next to a guy like Kyrie, who can really get him some easy buckets, is just gonna allow him to progress at his own pace. <laughs> Fizz, I love seeing KD play above the rim. 17 oh. months after playing his last game in the finals, to be out there on the court and to show that that level of elasticity is back in that leg of his and obviously have the confidence to go for plays like that shows me that he's progressed uh, mm -hmm. to a really strong level entering this season. And we, we've looked at guys in the past who've had the Achilles tear. Uh, basically no one that I can recall that was at his type of level, returned to that type of level. So he's trying to accomplish something that's unprecedented here. But certainly, like I think part of the reason Kevin Durant hasn't had the best relationship with the fans and with the media is that maybe he hasn't gotten his proper due as being one of the greatest players of all oh. time and certainly one of the greatest of his generation. And I, I think perhaps you know this could be a reminder to everyone of just how great of a basketball player he is if he can stay healthy on the court this year. I mean, look, uh, we haven't seen a guy with his body type in his prime of that skill level right. have this kind of injury. So he could really be rewriting the book on what an Achilles injury can and can't do to you. And the chemistry he had with Kyrie on the court yes. was remarkable. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.